This is Mishko, creator of Quick. You might already know him as he also gave birth to another pretty famous framework called Angular. Last week I've been in Florence to attend a workshop where Mishko and Giorgio showed us some cool features you can find in Quick. And also I got this amazing t-shirt. By the way, today we're gonna see what I learned about Quick during the workshop. Let's create a project real quick. You can do that with npm create quick at latest. You can type a name like quick video and I can select a template. I will go with the empty app which already has routing so that I can show you some of the features. I want to install npm dependencies and I will skip the git repository for now. So what is quick? One more JavaScript framework. Yeah, I know, but this one is slightly different from the others. It is based on resumability. But what is resumability? Well, just keep watching this video, I will show you. Let me now open it in VS Code. Let's begin by creating a new root. Just go on source, roots, and here I can create a folder called counter, the really basic example, index.tsx, and from here I can just create a new quick component. The component will obviously need to be imported from builder.io slash quick, and Let's begin with a hello actually. I can now execute the app with npm run dev or nr dev. It is using vit under the hood. I actually need to change this one into export default so that it shows up as a default component in my page. And from here, if I add counter, there it is, my hello that I've written here. To begin with, you can notice that in the network tab, every time I refresh the page and I go on JS, if I remove Vit, well, nothing is downloaded. So no JavaScript is downloaded at all. This is just plain HTML. For example, with any other framework, here you will find the code that is needed to run the framework. On Quick, you only download the pieces you exactly need. Let's now start building the counter. If you know React, you will probably use a set state, but here we directly use a signal. So use signal and we can initialize it to one, two, three, for example. We can now show the counter here, as usual with the brackets, count, and if you go there, one, two, three is already displayed. And again, if I refresh the page, you can still see that no JavaScript is downloaded, even though this number one, two, three actually comes from here. We can now create the button, and handler is on click with a dollar sign as usual. You will always find dollar signs in Quick because that's what makes the magic happen on downloading only the JavaScript code you exactly need on that specific place. In this case, in the onClick handler, all we have to do is just create a function which actually gets the value of count dot value and well increases it by one. We can type plus one here, and if we save, we refresh the page, you can see here there's Still no JavaScript downloaded. And now if I click plus one, oh, there it is. This is the code needed to run this function. And you can see here is exactly that. And now if I continue clicking, nothing happens here because all the needed code has been downloaded on demand and the browser can now execute JavaScript as if it was already there since the beginning. So if I refresh the page, again, it is empty. I click the button, it downloads my component and a couple other tiny files needed to make quick work. This is actually the first example of resumability. The server renders count, which is one, two, three, generates the state that is good enough, and sends directly the HTML value to the client with the state serialized. After posing the content, sending it to the client, the client can then resume the state that got serialized on the server and keep continuing the execution exactly from that specific point. To give you an example, something similar happens on virtual machines. You can set up a virtual machine, execute the operative system, start all the apps, and then you can set the machine in pose, which will basically put all the content in a file. You send that file to your friend, your friend can then execute that file and it will no longer need to wait the operative system to load, but the virtual machine will start exactly at the same moment and with the same state it was posed when you just press the button. So something similar happens on Quick. The server does his initial computation and when there's nothing else to do, sends everything as a snapshot to the client and then the client, if needed, can continue and resume the state and then keep doing everything else the users want to do by pressing buttons and interacting with the UI. 
And also, as you can see here, if I hold the key Alt in my keyboard, you can see that this is highlighted in blue. What happens if I click? Well, it will open VS Code in that specific file you were looking for where that component is defined. I mean, this is not something only we can do, but it is a cool addition, isn't it? Something as powerful as Signal is use Store, which basically is similar to Signal but holds an object as a default value. In this example, I'm also gonna show you how useTask works and how the function track is similar to useEffect in React but is much more powerful. The starter here is a component with a number, you can increase the counter and shows how many times it changed, and after a second, the bounce will show the value again. The default structure here is that we have our main component, which has a child holding the state. The child shows the current number and has a grandchild, which shows the debounced value. Why do we need this example? Well, it is to show that this console log grandchild, this console log child, and also the render of the app are not run every time. The thing is, if you had a use effect here, every time the value in the dependency array changes, this entire component has to re-render. And if this component re-renders, also the child and the grandchild, they have to re-render too. So what is the advantage of Quick? Well, let me show you. I'm here and I refresh the page. I can now check the console and it says that on the server, app, child and grandchild rendered once. If I go back on the browser, first of all, here network, no JavaScript. I hit the plus button and JavaScript is downloaded as you would have expected. I go back on console and I can see that count changed. I can keep changing my counter and after a couple seconds, the bounce matches the value. But if I check again here in the server, nothing rendered again because you store, similarly to your signal, just updated that specific part that needed the updated value. And you can see that the function inside use task executed every time because here there's a console log count changed. And this log never happened on server, obviously, and only happened on the client. But in fact, running this function updating both values of count and the bounced did not update child, which uses count, and grandchild, which uses the bounced. Next up, we have one of Mishka's favorite demo, that is, use the clock. Here you can find some HTML with no JavaScript, and if we scroll down, you can see that something got downloaded, and we have a clock running here in the browser. But what is going on under the hood? The clock is actually defined here as a component, and it used in the main component defining the page. By the way, also Astro is one more framework really good in doing something like that. In this case, the function is inside this use visible task, which, as you might guess, only executes when the component using this task is visible in the browser. One more interesting thing to notice here is this use styles scoped. Why scoped? Well, here you first import the CSS in line, so you do not take the file, but actually the content as a string, and then, if you go on the browser, you can see what scoped means. Quick will add this prefix to the classes to make sure that if you want to call a class clock, it's a generic name, it will not interfere with any other component, as this class is pretty unique. And since we're here, you can also notice this on queue visible, which is exactly what made the magic work. Only when this component is visible, this will be executed, that is, on internal of Quick which will make the download of the JS code start only when, like we said, this is visible. Let's get a little bit more fancy. In this case, you can type a username here or an organization name, and this will list all the repositories it has, or at least some of them. And also, if I type something, you saw loading appear for a moment. By the way, this builder i is actually an existing account which has no repositories. So, builder i shows an empty list. If I type something that does not exist, it will say error not found. If I type again builder io, it will show loading and then the list of repositories. How you can do that in quick? First of all, this is our component without store, with a default value, and use resource. What is use resource doing is similarly again to an effect. You can track the change of a value, you can add a cleanup function if you need and you can return some async data. In this case, 
get repository is a simple async function which just calls the github api and downloads the repo as a list so what is the advantage here well we're actually getting this repos resource data that is as you can see which is a resource return of a string array and while scrolling slowly you might have noticed this resource object which is obviously built in from quick and you can add here the value but you can also add what to show while pending while rejected and while result this is pretty handy but does user resource have to return something that is a promise well if you need some external computation you should probably use user resource which is exactly built for getting data from outside but if you want a more simpler case you can just use use computed for example if we go back to a simple counter component i can type use computed which will just take store.count and multiply it by two i need to import use computed and obviously i can show you here in the component if I go back on the browser, every time I hit plus, what are you expecting to happen? Well, double, we keep in sync with my value and show the computed value as the double. Like I said earlier, in case you need some more complicated computation, which is also maybe external, you want to use use resource. Otherwise, if you just need to mix some data you already have, then use computed is probably the better choice. But what if I need to read values from the parameters? For example, if I click here on a repository, I want to load a page, which will get Build.io and Figma HTML as parameters so that it can display something. Let's go back on VS Code and create our new root. If you use square brackets, it will actually read the value and put that in the root as you might already do with next. So we can type here user, we can create a subfolder with repo, and finally our index.tsx. Let me paste the code real quick. The first thing you want to notice is that we have this use location import from quick city, which we get into our location, params, and here we can get user and repo, which are the same one written here. And where does the repository come from? Well, we just created a hook, which is in fact a root loader, which again can have an async function, which takes params and can read again the user and the repo so that this code is actually executed on the server and the client already gets the repository object here with all the values you want to show to the client. So now if I click on builder, it doesn't work. Um, oh, okay, looks like this part should go here inside GitHub. Let's check again. Yep, looks like it worked. So now if I'm on the main GitHub page, if I click here on builder, it will load github slash builder.io slash builder. And this is the page generated from this code. You can see here on the network tab that I didn't actually call the GitHub API on the client, but it actually happened server side. And when the client loaded, it already had all the information it needed directly in the HTML code. But what if you need to do something server side without necessarily use the root loader and the params and all the structure? Well, here you can use server. As the name suggests, this will run only on the server. For example, here there's a console log prints on the server, which will appear here. If I go on the browser, nothing should show up in the browser console. So if I hit greet, it will say hello Leonardo, which is my name. This alert is defined here. So this worked and this happened on the client. But server greater happened on the server. And you can find here, prints in the server and my name, but the console here remains empty. And this is a super simple way to directly execute code on the server. For example, if you have to do something directly on the database, or if you have sensitive data like private API keys, well, just make this happen on the server so you do not risk to pass the API key here and there on the client. By the way, one catch about root loader is that you can only use this function if you're inside root, which makes sense. While server, well, this runs pretty much everywhere in your Quick application. But how can I help Quick development? Well, first of all, Quick is open source. This means you can contribute to the official repo on GitHub. 
You can also write integrations and uh, tools so that development is better on this framework and also give it a go, try it and send feedback on the official channels or on GitHub in an issue so that the framework keeps growing better and better every time. The workshop has been four hours long, so I didn't actually have time to put everything I learned into this video as I wanted to keep it shorter. But you can find here in the description the link to the full presentation held at Schrodinger Hat in Florence last week. And it was it. Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in Quick, I might make other videos in the future. So let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. And well, I think that's it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.